Hi, President Bucci. Good morning to you in Toronto. How are you? Hi, Dasha. I'm good. And you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. In the early morning, you look very cheerful. Ready for the busy day? <laughs> Ready for the busy day. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah. For all of our Rotterdam friends uh, who are going to watch us today, uh, we are back with our coffee time. And, and President Bucci, I have my coffee mug with me. You have your coffee mug with you? Yeah, I have an espresso. <laughs> so, so it's just tea. <laughs> oh. But we will start for my coffee today. Okay. <laughs> so for all the Rotarians who are going to watch us, uh, we are back. Uh, Rotary E Club One is back with its uh, another episode of uh, Coffee Time, and uh, as we all know that we discuss uh, with one of our Rotarians, and today we got the pleasure to be with our own President Bucci, who has been inspiring us to do something like this, and we bring this Coffee Time. So President Bucci, uh, rather I would say Doctor President Bucci. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, I'm not able to. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not able to pronounce your last name. The last name is Akpe. Akpe. So, Doctor Pres uh, Pas yes. uh, Doctor President Bucci Akpe. Uh, welcome to the coffee time. And Let's just uh, thank you. Let's just stick to Bucci for this session, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, Bucci. Uh, it's uh, nice to have you here, and uh, for next 20 minutes, I'm going to be the most pleasant person to have to know all about you. So let us start with your time in Nigeria, your teens, your education, and how you want to tell us. You tell us. Just inspire us the best that you can with your lifetime. Oh, well, I don't know about inspiration, but I will definitely share uh, my past with you. Uh, well, um, I'm from Nigeria, like you rightly said, and yeah. um, I was born in southeastern Nigeria, precisely in Anambra State, um, in some community called Anam. Okay. I spent um, four years of the first four years of my life there, and I did move around a lot. Moved from there to um, another state called Lagos. Spent my primary school years and moved to my home state for my secondary school education. And then again to um, Ibadan for um, university, just for my national service before um, coming to the U.S. So I pretty much moved around Nigeria oh. a lot, swinging between um, the different regions of Nigeria. And um, it, however, it was my first exposure to um, Rotary was while I was in my secondary school, um, Dennis Memorial Grammar School of Nature. And then support exposure was um, in medical school at the University of Ibadan. So, um, yeah, so my move around has been um, somehow um, for education and then tied also with my exposure and eventual involvement in Rotary. So you've been a Rotractor, right? Yes, yes. I, have, I, I was a Rotractor for 10 years wow. from 1999 to 2009. Uh, it was my Rotary experience that inspired me to want to join a Rotary club. And you also been a DRR. So, um, true, true, true. I've, uh, I was also a DRR, which is the Rotary's equivalent of the district governor. I was um, DRR for um, then District 9130 Nigeria, which is now District 9125. Oh. Yeah, my, my journey to being a DRR is interesting because, um, as you see, um, my um, desire to join, to eventually join Rotary was as a result of my elder brother, oh. who is a Rotarian and current governor of um, District 9142. Wow. You that's see, so good. Uh, yes, 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 yes. So it's really a Rotary family. We have four Rotarians yeah. in the family. So, oh. yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's sort of um, like a Rotary family. You know, um, my first exposure to um, Rotary, Rotary was in um, high school. Okay. But our first exposure exposure didn't do enough for me to want to join. He looked clickish, he looked like as if it was um, for an exclusive few, and that wasn't really the cool boy, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel like I could go join such a group, yeah, you know, yeah, but then um, when 
I was done with high school. I had a gap year, which I spent with my elder brother. Who, he was a Rotarian at the time, and he was his club secretary. Okay. You know, seeing him interact with his um, club members, seeing him um, and get involved in science, seeing retractors flock around him, you know, gave me a different perspective of this club, you know, made me um, stop seeing it as a cliquish team, stop seeing it as a, an exclusive preserve for um, a few, to start seeing it as a place where everyone who is interested in service could come together. Oh. So when I, yeah, when I eventually got into the university um, a couple of years later and um, I was trying to look for a way to deal with the stress of medical school, okay. I remembered my brother's club, you know, because that was what it was for me at first, my brother's club, you know, wanting to join my brother's club. And, and that was how I got into road rags, you know, and the journey started. And um, when I mentioned to my brother that I was part of road rags, the first thing he sent me was a combination of the ABCs of Rotary. I don't know if that is still printed. And then the DRR training manual, which is currently called the District Officers Training Manual. Yeah. And I was wondering why, I just joined, why are you sending me the <laughs> DRR training manual, you know? And um, his response was that, you know, it's all about, right? That yeah. every person in Rotary, Rotaract, is um, trained to be a leader. Our interaction, our service is to make a better form of ourselves. So me having the tools to which um, to um, learn about the organization would help. In fact, I got those even before I got the Rotrax, um <laughs> handbook. So yeah, so it would seem, um, even though it was years after before I, I got to become VR, but that was quite instructive that I started my journey um, learning fully what the organization that I'm just got involved, you know, wow. is all about. And the experience was good enough for me to eventually join Rotary E Club One. Oh, so fantastic. So fantastic. So, how did, uh, so when you came to USA, were you married or you, you married after coming down to USA? Pardon? When you came to USA, were you already married before coming to USA or you married after coming to USA? Can you, can you, can you get me? Can you get me? I think there is some internet problem. I believe so. I believe so. I, I can hear you right. Yeah. Now. Okay. I mean, like when you came to America, were you already married or you married after coming down to USA? Since um, I came in here in 2010 was when I, I moved to the US. Okay. And, um, the time that was, this was about a year after my stint as um, DRR. Okay. I was still physician at the time. Oh. I previously joined um, Rotary E Club 1 while I was still based in Nigeria. And um, my choice for Rotary E Club 1 was um, as a young professional who knew he would be highly mobile for several years before settling down. It didn't seem feasible for me to be able to join any of the existing clubs because of their meeting schedule, yeah. which required you to meet at a certain time at a certain place every week. Yes. You know, that, that wouldn't have worked out for me. I, I didn't own my own business. I didn't control my own time. So, and for me to get into anything, I would like to be dedicated. So the e-club option made it possible for me to make that transition from being a Rotaractor to being a Rotarian. The fact that I could participate in the meeting any time of the week, anywhere I am, yes. just as long as I have access to the internet, be it through a computer, a PC, or through any other type of terminal was a big plus, you mm -hmm. know? The fact that I could still do service helped. I mean, I would admit that at first, I wasn't so sure how that was going to work, but since I've joined, I've been able to do service projects in different locations I find myself. Okay. So, yeah, so that, that, that made it easy when I transited from Nigeria to the U.S. in 2010. So, um, initially to... Um, this, the Twin Cities of Minnesota and St. Paul, which is in Minnesota, and then eventually, um, five years ago, 
to the city of Houston in Texas. So you would see that um, since I joined, I've moved at least, um, I've moved that cities at least three times. Oh. I've moved countries at least once. So, but I've remained part of one club in that nine year period. So it's, um, it's it, I can never underestimate how much the whole concept of e-clubs have yeah. made it possible for me to, to remain part of Rotary. I think uh, e-club, uh, uh, e-club one rather was uh, the pioneer club, right? That's why we call it e-club one, right? Yes, yes, we call it e-club one because it is the um, it was the proof of concept yeah. before all um, stuff was taken up, and I believe the Rotarians at Boulder and the 5450 who came up with the idea were trying to solve a need, and I would say they had people like me in mind. Yeah. when they went forward with it and I'm thankful to them that um, you know they brought up this idea and to every other person um, who joined them in making sure this was adopted by RI. So it was a novelty at the time but today there are so many e-clubs around over 300 as I recall yeah. and um, yeah each of them as unique as every other Rotary club. Yes. I think uh, we are now about 76 or 77 members in our club, right? And uh, yes. we all are very lucky enough for the same concept that you went to uh, for an e-club option. So even including me being in China, being an Indian, and then I had no option to look out for another club. And I was fortunate enough to uh, get in touch with you all. And now I am also a member of e-club. So we all have been uh, fortunate to have e-club one. And uh, it's a it's a it's a long journey that you went through eclub one. How were your two years of presidentship with eclub one? Well, um, they've been very interesting. It's been a learning experience for me. He was originally meant to be a one-year presidency, like uh, most presidents in most clubs. Yeah. Um, however, we had a situation where. Um, for personal reasons, the president-elect had to leave the club to go take care of um, personal issues, and we had a vacancy, and um, with no um, member stepping up to. So it was um, a similar challenge, which I believe um, is not unique to our club, and um, the club leadership, and then in, ad in addition with uh, most of the more. Um, senior members in the club by that i'm referencing members who've been in the club for a while try to come up with a solution that stabilizes the club while still making a smooth transition to another term and the solution that um came up after much deliberation was to keep the existing board in place if um, the members of the board would agree to stay one more year that was how i went into um having a second year and I, I thank them because they, they really uh, made sure that we were able to transit, made sure that um, there was another president, another president elect was elected who could take over at the end of the two year. And they capped it up with also electing a president elect nominee to ensure a transition over a three year period. So we, we have um, we have stop gaps in place to prevent um, what led to me having a second year um, happening again. So um, the two years has been interesting, has been a learning experience, and sometimes has also been challenging. Yeah. You know, you've been on the board for a number of years, you think you know so much about your club, then all of a sudden you're president, and you realize that, yes, you know about your club, but perhaps not enough, that um, you have to um, be mindful of what you still need to learn, be open to learning those things yeah. and interact with your members in such a way that allows them to know that um, we are in this together. It's our shared vision. We're doing this together. So it's, it's, been, it's been very interesting. I've learned so much about other fellow members, much more than I knew um, before I became president because here I have to interact with almost everybody within the club. So I would say it's been <laughs> it's been a fun two years. Yes, it's been a fun two years. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm I'm happy for the opportunity. I thank the club for that opportunity. With that being said, I'm also eager to assist the incoming president, um, Ayo F Young, 
um, in his leadership, right? Yeah. So, as that uh, now we just talk about something about the E clubs. So, generally in the Terra clubs, normal clubs that what we uh, all have from so many years, hundred years plus. We have the opportunity of people getting together and then going for a community service or having some uh, fellowship mates or playing some games. Now that in e club, we do not have any meetings or rather than accept the uh, conventions or seminars that what uh, members would be meeting up together. Uh, how are the community service been done? Now, this will just enlighten the Rotarians who are going to see this thing, you know. So I will start with a, with one of the phrases you use: normal clubs. Mm. Rotary E clubs are normal clubs. Yeah. They are full-fledged Rotary clubs, like any other. Yeah. The only difference being they use technology as a means for uh, as a tool for yeah. meetings, as a tool for interaction, and often as a tool for service also. And that distinction has um, disappeared because almost most clubs these days introduce one form of technology or the other into their into their meetings as, and to to help them. So but in our own scenario, we're in a unique scenario because most other clubs have their members all in one city. Yeah. Or have their members all in the same country or in the same time zone at least. However, for us we have members spread across I believe um more than ten time zones right now. Uh, and over 15 countries at the last count. So um, with with that happening, having someone in the U.S., another in uh, Russia, another in um, Switzerland, Italy, Nigeria, makes it difficult to be able to um, pick a unique time that everybody will be online for a synchronous meeting. So for us, we, 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 we use um, the asynchronous meeting formats, which some will call the forum format, where we post meetings and then members take their time to respond to it and we interact in that same format. So how does this lend itself to project doing? Yeah. How that means is that every single community where we have a member is regarded as our community, is regarded as a local community for our club. And we encourage our members to identify what the projects that the club can execute in those locations. So I, I tend to use the phrase club sponsored projects like as against club projects, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. recognizing that these projects are member driven. So say for instance, I'm based in Houston. I realize that um, we may need to help um, drive up donations to the Houston Food Bank. I come up with um, a routine effort about this. I approach the club leadership. I identify a local partner because we always insist that our members identify a local organization to work with. We prefer that that local organization be a Rotary club, but not necessary. It could be any other um, community-based organization in that uh, in that location. The idea is we want sustainability. We want um we want to be able to like transfer on and uh, wants local content also. So say I identify maybe um, Houston United Against Poverty. I'm making that up as the local organization I'm working with. I discuss with them, we come up with a plan of intervention for the Houston Food Bank. Okay. And uh, we outlay a financial plan, we, we find out. And if it's something we're able to do totally um, raise without the um, seeking for external funds from the club, fine, we go ahead with it. And I just um, let the club know, hey, I'm getting involved with this. But if it's something that could benefit from club sponsorship, I come to the club leadership with a proposal, letting them know, hey, I've identified this, these are the local partners, this is how much the project is gonna cost, and I'm asking for a grant to support it in this amount. Usually, um, just some amount to complete it all. In some cases, the club leadership has been kind enough to fully sponsor some projects in the locality. With the provision when um, the club is granting, one major provision when the club is giving our grants is that it is member driven. Yeah. The member is involved also, and the member um, signs up to produce a report at the end of the day. 
So you see, like every other Rotary Club out there, we do projects. Um, we, but the difference being that we do not have one big, large project that we splash on for the year. Mm -hmm. We we yeah. have several many projects of different sizes. We use the word. Um, I, I prefer to use the word small grants for small projects and then large grants for large projects. And um, this last year, we, we, we actually had, um, we actually have several um, small projects that um, I believe almost about uh, 15 to 20 of them. Wow, that's pretty um, good. Getting small, yeah, ranging from, with values ranging from $500 to ten thousand and um, to ten thousand and above in different locations, and uh, we also involved in two global grants. One in the city of Lagos, Nigeria, to procure neonatal transport units okay. um, that would help, um, we hopefully help reduce infant mortality um, in Ogun State of Nigeria. That project is estimated to cost uh, over eight, over thirty thousand dollars. Oh. In the same country, we are involved in another global grant to provide um, portable water to okay. several communities in southeastern Nigeria. Now, that project um, is worth over $80,000. Oh. So, you see, it's just one year. We have a key driving factor is that we have members in each of the communities where this is cited, collaborating with a local organization to deliver this. So like every Rotary Club out there, we are able to carry out community projects. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. That's exciting, you know, and uh, what what message would you like to give to Rotary, uh, Rotaractors who will be migrating? Uh, now, I, as I was been talking to uh, in, incoming president, president elect uh, AO, we were just discussing about uh, looking forward to having new members, and we have been discussing maybe we can bring in some more members and uh, uh, those rotractors who are migrating because you have been a DRR because you have been a rotractor for ten years. It's a pretty good uh, treasurable experience. Uh, what message would you pass on to those rotaractors who would be migrating for the career, like have, like as you have been migrating around, you know, traveling around for your career? So, how can Rotary E Club One be beneficial to those rotaractors who are also in the age of being a Rotarian, but then they have been migrating, but then they have been traveling uh, for the career issues? How beneficial would Rotary E Club One be for uh, for them? Well, um, I would say, as a past retractor, who transited to Rotary, yeah. I would say, um, be sure that is what you want at that time of your life. Rotary might have been good. Um, Rotary is even better because Rotary is a Rotary program. But you have to be sure that you're ready to commit, just like you were able to commit for Rotary. That's true. If you're ready to commit, and the only um, worry you have is um, being able to go to meeting in one location, in one location every single week. Give me one second, please. Yeah. Can you yeah. pause this? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Good morning. Okay. Good. okay. So um, if your only worry at this time is how to um, go to meeting in the same place every week and you want to be part of the same club then rotary a club like mine rotary e club one would help you would get the uh, flexibility to be anywhere and still be part of the same club you also get diversity you may not you may think you're not looking for it but you get diversity in uh, in our club because you see people from different backgrounds and um, you don't have to choose between Rotary and your career would help you there. You would also see members with projects that would inspire you to think about projects within your own community. 
So in short, I'm saying um, if you're out there, you're a tractor looking to transit to Rotary, Rotary E Club One will make a good home for you. And beyond retractors alone, if you're a Rotarian and you're in transit and um, you want to maintain your Rotary membership until yeah. you stabilize, we have good home for you also. Um, we, there's been many Rotarians who, um, while they, they are career, their career changed, they've come to us as a home. And when um, years later, they feel like it's time to um, join a club within a community where they have settled, they've also moved to that club. And we've maintained relationships with them. So we could be your temporary home. Um, we could be your permanent home also. I'd rather we be your permanent home. That's so, how they say uh, becoming a global Rotarian. Exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. Global Rotarian. Yes, and exactly. That's, that's a pretty good message. Uh, I think uh, you are in Toronto now for, uh, for Toronto 2018 Rotary 18 convention, and uh, you would be busy pulling down your schedule from the early morning. It's about eight for, uh, 7.45 down there in Toronto, right? Yes, it's about 7.45, and the interfaith service um, should start in a, in a couple of minutes, and after that, the official opening ceremony. So it's, um, it's a busy time, like most poetry conventions. So yes. Fabulous. You are, you, are, Butchie, you are too lucky enough, too lucky enough to be there. Uh, let me take Thank this. you. Thank very, you. Very quick. What is your last message that would you like to give to inspire uh, uh, inspire those all Rotarians who are looking, who are who are listening to us, because uh, what we are trying to do is inspire and motivate more Rotarians, and also those people who are not uh, connected to Rotary, but then you know uh, they would be feeling like to come down to Rotary. Something very fast, very quick. Well, um, Rotary is good. Um, you have a pleasant experience. But to a large experience, your um, to a large level, your experience depends on how much you're willing to commit, how much you put in um, in your interactions with other Rotarians, in doing service, in getting to know your club. And each club is also unique. Yes, there's a common policy binding all Rotary clubs. All Rotary clubs have the same goal, but each Rotary club is as unique as its community. I would say to Rotarians who are watching this. Uh, there's no perfect formula. I'm sure my experience is different from yours. There may be some similarities and there may be some points of divergence also. Uh, that e club one does things in a certain way doesn't mean that is how your club should do it, but we do it this way, it works for us. And to non rotarians watching this, if um, perhaps maybe an e club might not be, might not look like a good place for you to start, but uh, if you're in a local community, I would say walk into a Rotary Club meeting. You're usually welcome. See how they do things. I'm sure they welcome you. And if you learn and you think it's a good thing for you, I encourage you to please join Rotary. And uh, if you think you're too busy, yes, you may be too busy and Rotary may not be perfect for you at that time. You can still contribute to what Rotarians do by contributing to our foundation. That's the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International. You'll be supporting the work that Rotarians do everywhere across the world. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gucci, for the fabulous time, for the fabulous uh, talk we had. Uh, you have got a lot of treasure within you. So this 25 minutes or 30 minutes are not enough for both of you to talk. So we will come back again and have a fabulous time at Toronto. Keep uh, inspiring us. Keep tweeting. And if you cannot... Thank tweet, you, Dashan. If you are too busy to tweet, no worries. I am there. Send me. I will keep tweeting. But then keep inspiring Thank you very us. much, Dashan. Have You've been doing time. great. Have a Thank fabulous you. time. Have Thank a fabulous you. time. Hugs to all of you and have a good day. Take care. Thanks. You too. Talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah.